All right, we're live. Howdy, howdy, howdy. I hope y'all can hear us. I don't know why the camera, maybe because of the the light. Maybe. So welcome to our, we're going to try to do these weekly through the month of January. Today we're doing Saturday, but probably next week we'll do Sunday um, so that we'll both be off because he will have to leave in a few minutes to go back to work. Back to work. Okay, volume is fine. Thank you. How's the lighting? Because I feel like the lighting, I don't know, on my side it looks like I'm kind of dark, but how is it on y'all's side? So how is everyone doing this wonderful Saturday? I'm so excited y'all are here. Let me know if you are here. Uh, put in the chat. Hello. Let me know if you're here. What? It's just funny. I do see 20 Q Cat is howdy, here. Howdy, howdy. So I know this is just a spur of the moment live. So we'll try to schedule these a little bit better next week. It's a little darker than you usually look, but it's okay. Yeah, I, I don't know why it keeps, like this camera just keeps adjusting. So I even tried putting a light on. I don't know if y'all hear that. That's the washer. <laughs> but anyways, I tried putting the light on and at first it looked good. And then all of a sudden it had me all dark again. I'm like, okay, what is up with this camera? So I'll have to play with it later. Hey, I see Patty's here. Hey, Patty, you made it. I'm, I know it's between the 1130 and less than one. So, but it's not <laughs> Sunday. Nice. <laughs> so glad I'm going to give it just Sunday, a Sunday. few minutes for everybody to get in. So glad y'all are here. I'm excited to hear how everyone is doing with your no spend January. And then I was going to talk about a tip on how to make it a successful no spend month or you know if you're not doing the no spend this month you know whatever is going on i know not everybody can that's fine maybe if you do a no spend in another month we could talk about you know a, a way to help you stay on track and be successful with your no spend so I am having my Dutch today, thanks to Lisa, and he has his. Just camera's all backwards. <laughs> Double rain, bro. <laughs> so um, I got back from the grocery stores. Hey, Sharon. She said she made it. I guess I should put some of these up here. I love the way you're doing no spin, but then you went to the grocery store. <laughs> Because we do need groceries, and I think that's okay to spend. But I did cut back on how much I'm spending on groceries. So I'm really, what I'm doing is avoiding buying any meat this month because our freezer is so full that every time I open it, I'm scared things are going to come falling yes, out. Yes, they do, actually, when you start <laughs> rearranging it. Yeah, and the, and the problem is with frozen meat it, it is, hurts it hurts if it falls on your foot you're like ow <laughs> so we definitely don't need to I buy more my meat tibia with a t-bone <laughs> and your tease. it's your tease you were looking for the tease but you wouldn't so, let it go yes i went to uh the grocery stores and got basically produce um, and some different melts that we need uh for the week uh, so I'm glad Sharon made it. Patty said, I think I have categorized mine as low spend. I like oh, that. Nice. There you go. Rita's here. Hey, Rita. Oh, and Sean's here. Hey, Sean. We should have done this next month and do it frugal February. I mean, we could still do frugal February. Thanks for the idea, Heath. Are you going to engage with this? That's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I'm talking to you both. <laughs> Uh, Patty said, right, meat is not on the grocery list this month for us, but fresh veggies and eggs are. Exactly. Yes, I have to have my eggs. Yes. And we're very fortunate because he has a really good friend oh, yeah. that uh, raises chickens and he gets a lot of eggs. So he was like, come get some. So we're going to get some free farm fresh eggs. It was a beautiful bar about that too is he doesn't even like eggs, but he raises them for his uh, family. I know. And he gives them so away to neighbors awesome. and to his family too so 
<laughs> Sharon said, Steph keeps reminding me to shop the freezer before we go out. Yes. Right. Well, one thing I'm going to do, and I think this is a good tip. Yeah, but I saw it on sale. This is a good tip as well, especially on, you know, I feel like now that the holidays are over with, we might have a little more time to our hands. So my number one tip would be start an inventory list. So you can either do an old school with pen and paper and just have an inventory of, you know, like we have several freezers. <laughs> we have our big upright. Then um, the other garage freezer is actually full of the dog's food. And then we have our inside um, half and half, you know, fridge freezer. So having an inventory list, so old school, write it down. Or I've seen some people will use a spreadsheet and actually keep track of the um, items in the spreadsheet, um, which is kind of easier if you do use an, a digital spreadsheet because it's easier to then remove, whereas on a pit of paper, you oh, oh, oh I used one, so you got to scratch out and put a one next to it or something. I have a list on my phone from about, I don't know, eight months ago when we first started <laughs> trying to do it, but it just, it just didn't follow through with it. Yeah, so I would say tip number one, do follow an inventory, through. and that would really help you, and then an inventory list of your pantry and whatever fresh veggies you have, and then that way... Um, what I've heard also under the media and say is what she does is every Thursday she reevaluates the list so that when she goes grocery shopping, then you know what's needed oh, and what is true. it. And then sense. also it helps with meal prep mm -hmm. because then you could be like, oh, these veggies are about to go bad. So let me use these up in, in a couple of dishes, right? Or maybe you have stuff in the pantry that's about to expire and you're like, okay, we need to use this up. That kind been, of thing. Would have been real handy last night when we would have remember to use that uh, garlic we made. Uh, right. Oh, I like this idea. So please share any tips that you have uh, for your no spin. And I really want to hear how everyone is feeling. You know, today is the sixth day of January. So how are you feeling about the no spin month? Uh, Sharon says dry erase board on the outside of the freezer works good too. I That's like that. Idea. Yeah, I it's like just, that. Having a nice dry erase board. We'll have to buy it in February no spin right right well i think we have like a couple floating around here you know we have like these sheets of paper here yeah. so we could the they're magnetic huh yeah, the notepads yeah the notepads so we could do that and put some on each uh of the refrigerators so we know what's in what that's right. a good idea but yeah a dry erase board that would be nice then you just mark it off so I'll go ahead and just kind of get started here. Um, so I would say one thing that can really help with not only motivating and inspiring you is to track your progress. So again, you can get uh, either a planner or, you know, have a user calendar. A lot of us have a calendar of every month and every day that you do a no spin, you know, put a check mark there and then put each day when you start kind of reflect on your progress so far. Like, how are you feeling about it? How much do you think you've saved so far? Um, and then, you know, what your goal is at that day for the no spend. And that'll just keep you motivated to go through the month and you'll be able to look back and see how well you have progressed throughout the month. So if you do, you know, oh, I just decided to get something off of Amazon because I forgot, that's okay because you'll be able to look back and say, but you know what? For 10 days, I didn't spend anything. Or, you know, for this length of time, I didn't. And over the whole month, hey, I only had, you know, that one or two. So definitely track your progress and that'll really ha give you time to reflect and see how well you did and maybe even challenge you going forward in like another, if you try to do it again, uh, like he said, frugal February, or maybe you want to do save a lot September, then you can refer to that and be like, hey, you know what? 
I did pretty good in January. You know, I had these days. I'm going to see if I could beat that in September or wherever you decide to do it again, or maybe even next year. You know, you don't have to do it all the time. It's just kind of a point to help you stay on track while um, we're recovering basically from the holidays, right? Patty says, I'm doing a list with tally marks taped to my freezers. Yeah, that's a great idea. It just, that's kind of how you did with the tally mark, right? Mm -hmm. You would put how many was there. So that's really good. And I liked how Shauna really got organized. And you saw she, in our Facebook group, she posted the uh, spreadsheet of all of her keto chows. So she would know how many uh, keto chows she had in total how many were singles and how many were big bags. So that really helps, again, just organizing it and then knowing where you're at. And then it helps if there is, like, say, a new flavor released or something else was released, you can look at that and be like, okay, I know there there's this new flavor or there's this sale, but you know what? I think I'm good. I could wait till next month or in a couple months and try to get through what I currently have. I mean, that's our plan right. with our pantry and our freezers. It's like, yeah, I know the roast is on sale for $3.99 a pound, but you know what? We got two roasts in the freezer right now. I think we're good. We do. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, I think we have one. But see, we uh, don't know because we don't have a full list. What I saw was a tri tip. We do have a tri-tip as well. I would love to go out there and start making a list. However, it is cold today. Like, it has been so cold. It was, when I left the house, it was 41 degrees, which is cold for us. Mm -hmm. I know some of y'all are probably laughing. But it was 41 degrees. And so the thought of going out in the garage, garage. yeah, where it's cold, and then handling all of the cold fr frozen food, it's like, oh. In fact, when you brought the dog food home the other day, it comes frozen. I actually put on my uh, oven mitts mm -hmm. to handle it. Yeah, because they get it really gets cold. So Quick. I would do that too: is get the oven mitts to handle all of the freezer food and try to figure out exactly what we have. I guess we got plans for Tuesday then. Uh, right? Oh, on my birthday. How fun. <laughs> Well, this was your idea. That's true. 20TQ Cat said, these lists absolutely work for me. Oh, good. If I see it written down in front of me, what I have, it's easier to plan meals. Exactly. Because, in fact, Heath and I were just talking, and he was like, oh, I don't know what I want for my lunch for the next week, because he does meal prep every week. And he's like, I just don't know what I have. And I'm like, well, I well, know, I know what we have. I just don't know what I want. Well, but you don't know all we have because, like you said, if we do have a roast, you might be like, well, you know what? I really enjoyed the beef soup I had this past week. Maybe right. I want soup again because it's going to be chili again. Or maybe he'll want to make chili for the week. I don't know. But um, maybe we will tackle that. And Patty said, no new keto chow. Yes, I. we have so much. I have not gotten as organized as Shauna and getting a spreadsheet of it, which I really should do that. Um, and I know right now we have a freezer full of creamies ready. Yes, that's true too. And so we definitely have that. And today I got some fresh blueberries, like really cheap at Aldi. And so he was already saying, ooh, I'm going to take a blueberry creamy and then mix in the fresh blueberries. And I'm like, yes, that but sounds good. The only problem with that, I don't think we have any empty creamy containers we what? have to eat one eat down to make them. oh right but i thought there was a blueberry in there no i don't remember i thought we need to do an inventory on that too exactly see all these new inventories so yeah i agree i think list and everything is really good list to know what you have so you can meal prep and then just that tracking of your progress to be able to go i know i get satisfaction when I check off and I'm like, you know what? You did another day with no spin. That's awesome. Right. And it just, I'm a check person. Let me know. Is anybody else uh -huh. like to do like a to-do list where you like to check off what you've done? I'm very much, that motivates me. <laughs> Patty said, I, I wear my winter gloves for the winter or for the freezer. Right. Because it's so cold. Like, otherwise, your fingers then feel like they're getting frostbit because it's so freaking cold in there. <laughs> uh, oops. 
Uh, Gigi said, hello, Shelly and Heath. Happy New Year to you and everyone else watching. Hi, Gigi. Happy New Year. We're just meeting today just kind of to talk about no spend January financial tips, um, any basically money related. So any if you all have any tips or if you have any questions. So if you have any financial questions or um, no spend questions, anything like that, please uh, put a comment in and let me know what questions you have. I'm more than happy to try to answer those the best that I can. And I see 20Q Cat said, Steve from Serious Keto is coming out with two new flavors of Keto Chow. No, I don't need any more Keto Chow. Just say no. Well, and right, it is kind of a challenge, right? Because for a company, they want to always have new and innovative items being released of, or products being released because, you know, they want a successful business. But as a consumer, you're like, look, I am really trying to cut back and save money this year. So please stop doing this, right? <laughs> but I mean, you we'll just wait and see. I, I really think it's good that when there is like new flavors or new products being released by the companies we love and follow to kind of have that joy of missing out mentality instead of fearing of missing out have the joy of missing out and being like, you know what? I, I'm happy other people are trying it and they get it in there. And you know what? If it really is a great flavor, then you know that company will definitely bring it back, right? That It will come back again. They'll get more in stock or it could be something that you save up and you're like, well, you know what? That flavor really sounds amazing or that product really sounds great, but I really don't have it yet. But maybe if I just put $5 aside a week, and so instead of going to getting my Dutch, I take that Dutch money and put it towards the new product that I want. And then that way I can save towards it, right? So you just kind of have to prioritize what you prefer to have over, you know, what you want, right? Um, so it's definitely what we have to look forward to and deciding your need versus wants. And Bluegrass Girl goes keto. Hey, Sarah. She said, greetings. How are you doing? Mary Ann's here. Hey, hey. Mary Ann. She goes, I'm a Florida native, so hate the cold. <laughs> 74 today, which is nice. That is. But 30s later this week. Ooh. Uh, we have roller coaster weather this time of year. Yes, ma'am. Same here. It's 56 right now, but it feels like it's like 40. <laughs> right? I mean, I still have my jacket on. This is this is my heavy jacket, right? <laughs> um, Maybe that's why I should go to put on the winter parka. <laughs> your winter parka? Yeah. You have a parka? That giant one, remember? Oh, yeah, because it's <laughs> another oversized. Yes. <laughs> The jacket that he could almost wrap around him twice. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's the same here. Like one day it will be in the 70s or a couple times we almost got up to the 80s. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly the next day we're back in the 40s. Um, I think one day this week. Oh, sorry. So yeah, next Friday is supposed to be a low of 30, y'all. So, But the day before, a high of 72. It's like the so, weather's bipolar. <laughs> right, right. Or a roller coaster, like yeah. Marianne said. 22Q Cat said, I'm a list gal for sure. I keep track of everything. Love to make those check marks. Love, love, love all the data. Yes, that is me. I like to keep uh, track and know what I've done. Like, I do get a yearly planner. So, he got me a planner for Christmas. And... And I, I love it because I can go ahead and plan things out in my planner. And then I like doing the little check mark. Like basically during the week when I work, I check off the day after I've had lunch for the day. Then I'm like, okay, this day is over with because I had my lunch. But it also helps me keep track of like putting in there again, going back to track your progress. Your progress is, you know, putting on there, no spend, check, I completed it. And then having also like a big calendar. So the planner he got me not only has the month in 
and uh, like two page overview. So you can see the whole month, which is great to say, yep, no spend on this day. But then it also has the weekly. So you can then go through each day of the week. Right. So that's really nice for me to keep a list and to keep tracking my progress, which is today's theme as far as how to make your no spin, low spin January a success is tracking your progress. And I probably said that too much, but I know some of you just joined. Uh, Shauna's is here. She said, well, at least I made part of it. Yes, you did. Welcome, Shauna. And 2ATQ Cat said, I know finances can stress some people out. For me, it's a game almost. Each month when I see how much I've saved, it's a wonderful feeling. I love the challenge. That's my approach too. And it's just the, to me, like when he got paid this week, I already had, because I have a Google sheet where I track all of our income, our expenses, our savings, everything. So I already put in, like I know our fixed expenses. So I do, I, I've heard different people's, they're always like, pay yourself first. But I'm like, well, I got to make sure my fixed expenses are paid first. And then before any of the others, like grocery shopping or, or little, oh, I need this or I want this. I then pay myself. So I figure out like on his paycheck, okay, this is what he got. Um, and, and I actually predict, I'm like, oh, okay, I think he'll get this much or I'm going to get this much of my paycheck. If my paycheck is more than what I had put in my budget, then I automatically, like his check was $100 more because I thought they were going to take out his insurance yesterday, but because it was for his hours worked in December, they didn't. So it was an extra 100 bucks than I had not planned. So I immediately took that extra money and put it in my HISA, my high yield savings, so that that way I still think, oh, we only got this amount of money, but I put that extra in my HISA. Uh, so I like to do things like that. And to me, it is a challenge to kind of reflect back and be like, wow, look at that savings just growing and keeping track of that. And just, it's a satisfaction to me. I know it can be stressful, but look at it. What I'm trying to view it as like, cause I know he kind of gets stressed with it is I like to view it as my future self. When they, when I look back at this time, I want my future self to be happy with the decisions I'm making today. Right. And so that my future self isn't having to be, you know, 75 years old working at Walmart, that hopefully my future self is going to be like, wow, yeah, I know you cut back on some things back in the day, but I am so glad because now I can, you know, enjoy my retirement and not be sitting there wondering what I'm going to, how I'm going to pay for groceries or how I'm going to get gas or anything. And you, so I'm just trying to make those decisions. So at times when I'm like, oh gosh, I really want, you know, X, Y, Z, I think, but is that going to benefit my future self? Would my future self be glad that I spent that money now on that? Or would they rather be like, you know what? It was better idea that you put that in the high yield savings or an investment um, so that now I can relax and not be fearful, right? Sharon said 34 here with a Real feel of 40. Oh, it must be nice and sunny. I'm watching the snow slowly melt. Come visit here, he. Oh. I would love to go there. I would love to go visit all of you. I think that'll be fun. Again, this is something we can look forward to. So when you're saving and like we're doing this low spin, no spin. Oh, he's got to go back to work, y'all. So when we're doing Bye. this. Bye. <laughs> You don't want to have self-deprivation, right? You still want to have things that you can look forward to. So think of it this way. When you're doing your no spin this month, that money that you're saving, what could you use part of it for? Yeah, definitely put some into your investments, into your savings. But maybe you take some of that and you go, you know what? 
because we're going to save, I'll just say $500 this month by watching what we spend or not spending on extra on things, I'm going to take a part of that and we're going to have a really nice dinner out. Or maybe we're going to take a nice little weekend getaway. You know, have something to kind of reward yourself, but also make sure you're saving some of that as well. But have something to look forward to. Uh, Patty said, I backed off my specialty coffees out by making my own with the chocolate electrolyte pack, saving money that way. I love that idea, Patty. I mean, you could definitely make some great coffee at home. There are so many options. And then that way, look at that. You are making your coffee not only delicious and saving money, but you're getting in important electrolytes, which is awesome. I mean, how many specialty coffee shops can say that, that you could get a healthy, beneficial cup of coffee, right? That's awesome. Patty said, hashtag list are the best. I agree. I love a good list. Sean said, it's 33 and freezing rain here. Oh, no. Well, I hope you two are staying warm. And I hope that Michelle doesn't have to go out and work tomorrow in that. Marianne said, I'm working a lot of overtime right now, so I'm trying to stash some of it and pay off some bills with the rest. Yes, Marianne, because you've got that retirement date in your future, right? You're like looking down, counting down those days until you're officially retired. So any of that that you could just stash away, you will be so happy after you retire because you'll be like, oh, finally I'm free of the workplace and I've got a nice chunk of change here. That's awesome. Shauna said, I try to do list, but then my list end up having list. And then I end up with three notebooks and envelopes with things written all over them. <laughs> Hashtag ADH, or, yeah, ADHD list making. <laughs> right. Maybe, maybe a digital list thing would be good for you. Because then you don't have to, oh, where did I put that list? You just have a file on your computer where you keep your list. I absolutely love Google Sheets. It's Google's version of Excel spreadsheets. The reason I like it, it's free. <laughs> uh, look, I will always, and I guess this is another frugal tip, I always look for a free version of whatever. Like I know sometimes you'll like go to like the ad stoppers or whatever, and they'll say, oh, get this one, you know, only $2.99 a week or whatever. Or, oh, yeah, look, you can use our program and it's only $5 fee. And I'm like, mm. But is there a free option? Let me try to find the free option. And that's what I always gravitate to. I very rarely want to pay for anything. Um, in fact, when we first started live streaming, StreamYard has a free version. And that's what we used um, well until after we weren't even monetized. And then after we got monetized, after a couple of months, I was like, okay, I think now seeing what we're getting from YouTube, then we can invest that into the paid version of StreamYard. But I'm always going to look for the free first. And so any free things. So I, um, when it comes to the Google, Google has sheets. They have, uh, what is it? Their own version of PowerPoint, their own version of, of course, Outlook, Gmail. Um, but in their own doc or word version and it's all for free so i was like last year i paid uh microsoft i think it's like 78 dollars a year to have the microsoft license and last year i was like well i guess because i had some documents in spreadsheets and stuff i still wanted access to well knowing that over this past year I transferred all of that data to Google Sheets because I was like, I'm not going to pay that fee anymore when I can get it for free from Google. So I did all that and I canceled that Microsoft subscription. Just saved me 78 bucks a year just by doing that. So little things like that, almost everything you could think of, there is a free version available. 
Uh, Tweet TQ Cat said, all of the data is also nice to have when you want to look back at years past and see how far you've come. It's all right there to compare. Handy. Yes, I love that. And that's so good because sometimes, like when you said about being stressed, sometimes we do get stressed over finances or we're stressed about how we're doing in our journey or how things are going or what have we accomplished. And it's easy to look back over the past year, and I find us as humans do this, it's easy to look back and only remember the bad parts, right? Or the parts that you didn't do well. It's easy to mentally reflect that way. But when you have it in a list, when you have it in black and white, you could go back and you could be like, well, this is what I recall. And then you look back and you're like, oh, but I actually... I did pretty well. Like that's, that's really acceptable. So in, if you don't record that, you won't know if you're not tracking your progress, you're not going to know how you really did. And then it's not going to be there. And you're just going to remember the bad parts of it instead of all of the good things that you did over the past year. So I like that. Marianne said, I'm a little old school. I keep my bills and fixed expenses on a paper spreadsheet in a notebook whatever works i think you have to know yourself and what you feel like really gives you the least amount of stress whatever is going to help you continue that on where you know you will continue to track that you will continue to update and so if you're a pen and paper person Keep it up if that's what helps you see it. And I know I learned a long time ago in college, the, the way you remember stuff is you say it out loud, you write it down, and then you, um, what was the third one? Say it, see it, and I guess read it. I think that was it. And so, yeah, when you're writing it down, it can help you remember more because you'll be like, okay, no, I remember my expenses were this. Oh, and that's what I spread. I saved here. And I remember writing that down. And then you could look at that. So it definitely can help more if you do write it out. If that helps uh, you keep better track of things. Because I know that sometimes when you are, um, doing it digital, sometimes that doesn't help as much. Gigi Sears said, hey, I'm 75 and work at Walmart. Well, I don't mean it as like a negative. I certainly don't. I didn't think you were 75, but nothing, um, nothing wrong about that other than what I was trying to say is sometimes if we don't take care of our future self, then it could end up being something that is stressful when you're retired. And you know, when you're getting up and you're in your 70s, 80s, and 90s, you certainly don't want the added financial stress on top of everything else that might be going on, right? Sharon said, after so many years of Steph being in the Navy, he was paid on the 1st and 15th. I still, to this day, plan on those two dates for when our expenses get paid. That is an amazing tip, Sharon. I have heard that and I think that's great because you you have that fixed on there. And then now I know a lot of jobs now do every other like Friday for your payday. So you might have a month or two during the year where you get like a third paycheck, right? But if you are just planning on, hey, I'm only getting paid twice a month and you plan your expenses only to those two dates, then when you get that extra paycheck, you can put it right into the savings because you're like, oh, no, my expenses are planned on these two paychecks only. So if I get an extra paycheck, it just goes to savings like I never received it. So I love that. That's a great tip, y'all. Try to really get your expenses. If you're paid every other Friday, try to really get them where it's just two times a month that you pay those expenses. Gigi Sears said, just kidding. I just retired in April and loving it. Well, that is so awesome, Gigi. Congrats on retirement. That's awesome. And see, isn't it nice being retired? 
Y'all have to brag because I know I've got at least 20 more years. 22Q Cat said, I'm so thankful I didn't blow through all my money when I was younger. I never went without a thing. I just didn't waste a lot of money. Now I can enjoy retirement. Just stay focused on your goal. Thank you. And see, that's great to hear because sometimes we get so wrapped up in the now that it's hard to look at the future. And especially I feel like ever since the pandemic, that a lot of people have had the YOLO mentality because that was such a scary thing for so many of us to go through, right? It, it, here was this global pandemic and you're just thinking, is there going to be a next year? Is there going to be a retirement, right? So just kind of stepping back and being like, you know what, there, there will be a future, I need to relax on what I'm spending on and really focus on my future self. So they like 22Q Cat. The 22Q Cat said you can look back and be like, "Yeah, that's right. I'm glad I made those smart decisions." And I love when y'all share that. Hey, you know what? I did make those sacrifices when I was younger, and I feel much better about my position now. Sharon said, most cell phones have a note app. Yeah, that works great too. I use mine all the time. Yes, I love, because we have a Samsung note and I love using that note. I use it for so many things and it's just handy because you just walk through. And what I like is the Samsung note. You can even change it to a to-do list or a checklist. And then I could be like, oh, okay, check all the different things off. So great suggestion. Shauna said, yes, I got the free ad block and still no ads. Awesome. See, there's always a free option. So that's one thing you could do as well. If there's anything that you're paying for, and that's kind of the goal for the no spend, again, or the low spend, even if you're not participating, just taking that moment to look at all your finances because it is so easy to just get in the routine of, well, I got paid. Now I pay my expenses. And you just go through that without actually sitting down and looking at your overall budget. So looking at those things and being like, okay, why am I paying for the streaming service when there are free streaming services out there, right? You might have to have a few ads, but Probably beats paying 10 to $15 a month when you can get free shows. Like I've heard uh, even a lot of the, a lot of people are like, oh, I keep Amazon Prime because of the Amazon video. But a lot of the stuff on Amazon video are available for free on other platforms. I think, I don't know all of them yet, but it's like um, freebie or free somebody list them, but there are several. So just taking that moment to look through and say, what am I paying for? And is there a free version available? Because nine times out of 10, there's probably a free version. <laughs> Patty says she loves Google Sheets. Oh, me too. It's so handy. And like I have my whole budget Google Sheet. Um, I also have one that I keep other, like all of our channel members information. I have in a Google Sheet. Um, all of my Etsy shop, I keep in a Google Sheet. It's just so handy because I could get on, you know, my phone if I need to or on any of our computers and look at my Google Sheet and know where we're at. Twenty TQ Cat said, yep, yeah, way to go, Shelly. Well, thank you. Mary Ed said, I have office free through work for now. I have to reassess after retirement. Yeah, if you have a free, again, any free option, keep it. But once it's no longer free, because you know how a lot of companies or products are, they're like, oh, it's free for now. And then eventually they're like, oh, okay, now it's going to be $39.95 a month, you know, something like that. Sharon said, I have an Excel spreadsheet that I've used for 15 plus years. Wow. I track everything that goes out. Added some logic to give me a running total of each expense. That is amazing, Sharon. I love that. And what a great way to look back over the years too. Marion said, I get paid every two weeks. So twice a year, I get three paychecks. Right. That's the same with myself and with Heath. So I really, before... I've, oh, 
I'm telling you, the last couple of years have been a nightmare, but we have just been living paycheck to paycheck. And I, it's hard to say living, right? So my goal this year, as I'm doing my budget out, so I'm trying to do a quarter at a time. So now that it's January, I added April to my budget. What I plan to do is only, and in fact, the budget um, that I'm using, the Google Sheet budget that I used, I found on some site, it only has spaces for up to four paychecks in a month, which is perfect for Heath and I. I was looking for one that, you know, was better for Heath and I, because uh, a lot of them, they only want you to put your monthly total. And, and I'm like, no, I want something because I like to see, you know, okay, per paycheck. So in this case, it's almost a weekly basis because we get alternate paydays. So I like to break everything out per paycheck. Well, since this budget app I'm using, our Google Sheet, only has space for four paychecks, then I am really only allowing those four. So the twice a year that uh, he gets three paychecks and I get three paychecks, I'm not even going to use that third paycheck, right? Not even going to factor that in. So in fact, Heath will have a three paychecks in March. And that's the first time this year he'll have it in March. I'm not even counting that third paycheck. I'm just like, nope, we're not going to do that. I'm going to take that and put it in investments. Uh, Gigi's here said, Shelly, laugh out loud. No, I'm not 75. Okay. I, I, I hope I was like, I don't think that's right. <laughs> she goes, I do hope you know I was totally, yeah, I know you were just playing with me, but I just want to make sure because you never know some people who listen might might take offense, right? Uh, Sharon said, now he's paid weekly. And yes, we have what I call a skip check. Works out to maybe three or four free checks each year. Wow, that's awesome. It's see those extra paychecks. You just pretend like they're not even there. And then you save even more. Uh, one of the goals I have this year is I would love, so first goal is the first quarter one, I want to have enough money to pay my taxes due at the end of this year and just put that money in the HISA and just let it just sit there all year, all the rest of the year. Then I also want to have enough saved up where I could pay the taxes it, that would be due in 2025 and have that saved up by the end of third quarter this year. And then what I'll do is put that in a CD Hopefully, CD rates will still be there. I want something that's going to be greater than 3%, right? Got to beat the inflation. So I'm going to hopefully then put that in a CD so it could gain even higher interest than my HISA for the year until it's due in 25. And then my other goal is in the second quarter, which will start in April, I want to have enough to get all of the insulation in our attic done. So I need to get up there. It's just scary for me. I'm not a heights person, but I need to get up there and see if it's something I could do. I want to do the blown in insulation. And so I know overall that will end up being cheaper to do blown in. And it looks like it would be easier as long as I could get up there and walk around the attic, right? So I want to do that. I might price it out to see how much somebody would charge to do it because I just don't know. I've never been in our attic. So I don't know the layout as far as if it does have places where I can walk through there and places that would hold me. Um, I know he he does have trouble. So if it, what the plan would be if we do it ourselves is he would be downstairs loading the machine with the blown in and I would be up there blowing it. <laughs> um, so we're just going to see, I'm, I'm going to do both, see how much it is for myself and then see how much a company would charge and what the difference is, if it's worth that. And then also if I'm able to do it. So we'll see, that's the plan. Uh, I would like to get that done in like April, you know, before it gets too hot here, um, in the summer so that we have, and I want to get the highest insulation. So yes, I know it'll be a bigger cost up front, but I think in the long run, it'll end up paying off 
in fold. So my um, ROI will be more worth it to do the R60, even though it's going to be more, I think over the years, it'll end up paying back. I'll, I haven't done pen to paper to find out what my return on investment would be and how long it would take, but I think overall it'll end up being better. So I really want to get that done before summer really hits, which really starts to get hot here in June. So if I could get that done in late April or early May, that's my second major goal this year. Patty said the two extra paychecks we get this year are already earmarked to be extra on the mortgage. Way to go. That See, that's a great plan as well. Sean said, for me, the worst thing I could do is sign up for auto pay because I'll just forget about it. Right. Yeah, because you're just like, oh, that's, oh, that just automatically comes out. And then you for, forget that it's actually there because you just get used to that coming out. Sean said, I get paid on the 15th and the last day of the month. Shell gets paid every two weeks. It's great when they are on opposite weeks because it's easier to budget for groceries and gas that way. Yes, I agree. For a, a long time, Heath and I would have the same paydays, which it does kind of make it harder, right? Well, now it's really nice because it's every other. So every week we have a paycheck hitting. And it's been so much easier when it comes to budgeting because it's like, okay, well, this week is my bank, next week is your bank, and then budgeting exactly down to the penny. Okay, this is what's coming out of yours, and this is how much we have extra, you know, and then budgeting the groceries for that week. It just makes it easier. And you would think, oh, it, it should, it's the same amount of money, but it just feels different when it's, every other shauna said auto pay usually helps me but last month tried to be a good adult paid extra bills but forgot the two big auto pays and put myself in the hole and it what a mess i know i remember that it that is the thing is if you do auto pay like i have a couple that i do auto pay but i make sure whatever that date is that you know my paycheck's going to hit correctly and it'll come out um, because like, for example, the T-Mobile Wi-Fi we got, if you set up auto pay, you get $5 off a month. And so, yeah, if I'm going to say $5 to auto pay, I will do it. Um, if it's something else I do like, I use bill pay a lot through my bank and that makes it very convenient that way. Sean said, we have a Charles Schwab account. We invested in Amazon just over a year ago, and it's doing really well. Way to go, Sean. That's awesome. Great to hear. That's what I am uh, starting to do. So I'm reading the book Invested by Danielle Town. I highly recommend it um, only on Chapter 3, but I really like it. Um, so I am going to start researching more different companies that I want to invest in and then just do the long approach, right? Like Warren Buffett, number one, don't lose money. So just going to hang in there, pick companies I think have a long lasting ability and just buy their stock and let it sit there. That's my plan. Uh, Shauna said, I was able to cover it eventually, but was a big bummer. Right. Such undue stress, right? Sharon said, from a rather experienced DIYer, I know, you're like the number one DIYer. Get quotes. That's going to be nasty to do. Plus, you need to make sure you don't cover any of the soffit vents. Air circulation is necessary in an attic. Yes. Thank you. Um, I've watched several videos on how to do it yourself. And like there's the... For the vents, there's like these little plastic things that you get. It kind of looks like um, the painting pans, but upside down that you put where the vents are. And then, of course, if I do it myself, I'm going to get the full body for both Heath and I, the full body, you know, where it looks like we're a hazmat suit. Um, you know, because like us just putting the wrap around our uh, heat, our hot water heater or water heater, Sorry, good thing he's not here. He'd correct me. But when we put that around the water heater, even though we were wearing gloves it, and, and had on goggles, it still got on my face and everything. So I was like, no, 
We're going to do the attic insulation. I'm getting the hazmat suit, getting the whole face protection. Like I ain't going to take a chance on it. So, and with that, that's why I have to see, am I going to be able to get to the corners where the vents are to put those things in place? I'm pretty sure footed. Uh, I don't consider myself like a clumsy person, but it's just, I don't know the layout of the attic. If, if it is accessible enough for me to do it myself. So, but the other thing I, I, I guess it's a little trust factor because, you know, we've had some contractors before that just were total shit. Right. And it's like, I don't want to hire somebody and tell them, yeah, I want an R60 when I don't know what R60 looks like. I, I know there's a way you can measure it, but if I can't get in the attic, I've just taken their word at it. And what if they're like, yeah, they paid for R60, but we're just going to put R30 because we're done. You know, like I could totally see companies doing that. Um, I even, uh, there's an experience one time my mother had floor put in and they charged for all of the top stuff. But then when they came out, they switched everything down to the cheaper version, like the cheaper glue, the cheaper of everything. And, and then it ended up having issues because they the brand of flooring that she used was not compatible with the cheaper. And it started looking like it was mold growing. And, and it came out that, yeah, they were using the cheaper stuff. And the manufacturer of the flooring was like, yeah, that's why we put on there recommended this is what you use or better. And that's what we had paid for or she had paid for. But that's how the company tried to make more money off the sales. So they advertised, hey, we've got the cheapest price. And they would give you a cheap price. But that's how they were doing it. They were making you pay for the high price stuff. But then they were using the cheap price stuff so that their margins were bigger but, you know, really screwing the customer over. So that's always my concern when I hire a third party is it's like, are they going to do what they're supposed to do? Um, so that's my other concern. I definitely get quotes from several companies before I make a decision and read, you know, all the Google reviews and everything, you know, just to see what their, their you know, reviews and what people say. So... That, that's why, again, I'm not planning until the end of April or beginning of May because I need this whole quarter to really research the whole thing. And then I eventually need to go up in the attic and just see what I could get in there. I just don't know if I could get into the attic. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm a little concerned about that because it's like a height thing. And then I'm like, but then am I going to go through the attic? Like as soon as I step down, am I going to come falling out? You know, then that that would be awful. <laughs> 22 Q Cat said, I think sometimes people feel you have to be rich to do investments. Nope. Just do it. Invest today, be rich tomorrow. Yes. And I think that sometimes it feels overwhelming, right? And you feel like, well, I just want to pay somebody to do it, which read investment and they'll tell you how that's not good either. So really taking the time to learn yourself and do it yourself. It'll be so much better for you. And it is not scary. Just be every day you basically invest when you go grocery shopping, right? You're investing in the companies, the products you're buying, the, the energy and the effort you put into choosing the products you're going to buy. That's the same amount when it comes to investing. And it's not so much harder to start investing. It's you decide what companies you like, what companies or products align with yourself. And then you just invest just like you do when you go to the grocery store or you go online, like Sean, buy an Amazon. Probably like, well, I use Amazon all the time. Why not own part of that company? It's the same type of deal, y'all. Real easy. Shauna said, oh, I have paid extra because I got a really good December bonus. That's awesome. Sharon said, we have put down blanket insulation, but even Steph passed on doing blown in. Oh, really? I've looked at that. I, I'm kind of excited about the blown in. It just, I don't know. We'll see. 
I've looked at both and it seems like the blown in is a little bit cheaper, but yeah, and you could get it a higher amount. Um, the videos, it makes it look pretty good. Again, and my thing is it's going to be accessibility and which would be the same thing with the blanket. I would have to lug all of the blankets up there and then get down on my hands and knees and really lay those in there so to me, for me personally, I feel like it's a little more challenging to do the blanket insulation. Uh, Marianne said, I have a tiny amount of Amazon too. It's a nice, it is nice right now. Wow, that's awesome, Marianne. Mary T's here. Hey, she said, dang, I almost missed this. I was on a Zoom call with my buddies. I'll have to catch the replay. I really wanted to fix my financial health, but I'm clueless. Well, we got you, girl. Definitely, um, you know, rewatch. I just, my biggest thing I think that will really help keep you inspired and on track is tracking your progress. Like I use the word track twice there, but that's what will really help you is just track your progress. So even if you're not doing a no spin or a low spin, just track every day this month what you've been doing, um, how you're doing it, your budget, just doing that simple thing will pay so much benefits to you because I really feel like a lot of people just don't look at their budget. Um, MS Toff 2, welcome, said YouTube is your best friend for winter renovations. Currently ut utilizing that to redo our shower. It's saving a ton on labor. Yes, that is so true. YouTube has so much information out there. This is really a great platform to learn. Like I've always been a knowledge seeker and I've used YouTube to figure out how to replace the filters in my car because, you know, the, the garage is like, oh, okay, you want to replace the filter? That'll be $25 or that'll be $40. Well, I looked it up. I just put in my make and model of my vehicle and put air filter or AC filter, saw how to do it, saw the brands to use, found it on Amazon. I could get a three-month supply of the filters for less than the price of what the garage replacing it one time would be. And it literally took me less than five minutes to do it. I was like, I'm paying them $25 to $40 for something that took less than five minutes? Like, that was crazy to me. So it there is so much information on YouTube. So anything, if, if something goes broke, you can find a YouTube video on how to fix it and save money there. And then Patty said, I too have repairmen and construction people PTSD. Yeah, like it is really a thing. And it's sad because there are good contractors out there, right? But... There's so many that are just trying to rip us off. And once you get a hold of one of those, it just makes you very antsy to use another one. Like you just don't trust them. Like I just feel like uh, what, like how do I know that you're going to do that? Especially if they know like you can't get up in the attic. Like then they're like, yeah, we'll just do this. It's very hard to know that they're doing the correct thing that you pay them to do when you can't inspect it yourself. So I feel like no matter what, I need to find out how to get in that attic and be able to do that. Um, that's why sometimes it's good if you have like a good friend or neighbor or family member that can also help out and then they can, you know, be there for you to look over everything. Shauna said, I think my PTSD of closed spaces and attics would overrun my bad service PTSD, right? It can be. Uh, it is a little scary up there. <laughs> Sean said, walk on your supports, not the drywall. Well, and that's the thing is I don't know where my supports are. Like I know what they look like, right? It's like the two by fours that are upright and you're supposed to walk between them or, you know, walk on them, not between the, not in the space between, right? The, the, them sitting up. And then I saw in some of the YouTube videos where the people had like um, on top of those two by fours, then they had like a strip down the middle 
of like, so they would have like a full platform that they could walk on. But this house being so old, I don't know if that platform exists up there. It might just be the two by fours or whatever they're called. I'm, I'm not a construction person. Um, so I just don't know the maneuverability of getting up in the attic. Sean said, being in maintenance for as long as I was, I got over my fear of heights and closed spaces. Yeah, that's, see, that's going to be the, the heights for me. And I just, I think I'm very self-conscious about my weight. And I always just assume that I'm too heavy for anything. So that's my concern is when I get up there, I might be like, am I too heavy to even walk on these supports? Like, is it going to even support me? Um, so that's my main concern. Sharon said, now would be the perfect time to try how you do up there. The tips are lower. Start with just picking your head up there and taking a look around. Yes, that's a good idea. I need to get up there since it is so much cooler and just take a look around. My main thing, because I have gone up the stairway because our um, condensation tray for our AC unit is right up where the attic entrance is. So I've kind of peeked around there. I'm trying to figure out because as soon as you go up the ladder, there's the one AC unit like, okay, so here's the ladder, right? As soon as you get here to the top of the ladder, there is like a unit. So you can't just walk straight ahead because there's part of the AC unit is right there. And then to this side of it, is the condensation tray in unit. So you can't walk there. So the only way when you get to the top of the stairs is you have to go this way. And I'm thinking when I get to the top, how am I like, it's just hard for me to visualize how do I go from the stairs into the attic? Like, how do I get my body there? Cause I'm not a young body. If I was in my twenties, I'd be like, yeah, I know how to do it. I'm so flexible. But now I'm just kind of like, I don't know if I'm that flexible to then go from the stair. Like, I might even be overthinking this, y'all. I might be making it worse in my head. But I'm just trying to figure out how I get from the top of the stairs, if there's no landing pad here, to then to this side. Like, I feel like, do I sit and then stand up? Like, there's nothing for me to hold on to. So, I don't know. I don't know. Um that's my main concern. Marianne said, I'm trying low spin, but going to dinner at a friend's house tonight. So I have to take my share. Well, and that's a great thing. You're going to a friend's house for dinner. I think that's a very low spin. Definitely cheaper. Like I saw Matreya, she was thinking of getting the Chipotle bowl and it, they wanted like 20 bucks for one bowl. Isn't that crazy? Like I remember when Chipotle, it was like five bucks. And now they want 20. I'm like, oh my gosh, that is nuts to me. But I think that's good. And again, the main thing here is to just see where you're spending money, what it's going towards, and just kind of really acknowledge your income and expenses this month. And then try to challenge yourself. So maybe you don't do no spend or low spend every single day. But even if you do it, more often than maybe you did it before, that's a win. And just tracking your progress is going to help you with visually seeing that. Hey, I see Matreya just showed up. I just mentioned you, Matreya. I was talking about your Chipotle $20 bowl. I was like, oh. Um, Sean said, even if you think you could trust someone, get multiple quotes. Ask questions about how they're going to do something and get them to provide details on what they're going to do and how long. Well, thank you, Sean. Those are some good points. Yeah, I would definitely, I've never been a person where it's like, oh, the first person I talk to, I'm going to go with. It's like, no, I'm going to talk to several people. I'm going to go with like my instincts as well, but I still want to talk to several and see everybody's, you know, uh, quote that they give and just really compare those thoroughly to see what is the best dollar value. Um, as you just never, you never know. And then also comparing it to, okay, if I was to go to 
Home Depot and do everything myself, what would that price be? Like putting a fence in, when we got uh, one of the fences replaced, I, you know, looked at what it was like at Home Depot and then got several quotes. And then the person we ended up going with, he ended up, I mean, I was really pleased with him. I think he did an awesome job, not only with the fence, but then he put in our whole deck. And I thought that he really did great with that. So I was really pleased with him, but I researched, I used, um, what's it? It's like a home builders or something. It's like a website that you could put in your area. You could read all of the, um, people the contractors reviews and then you could get quotes from several people so that's the one that i used back at when we had that done to figure out okay who's the best person and we had several people out and yeah one contractor after he like talked to him afterwards because i was like well he you put it in fences you know you talk to these people and know the questions to ask he said, like, after talking to this one guy afterwards, and they were just shooting the breeze, and he was like, no, we're not hiring him. He's like, mm, just something about him is just rubbing me the wrong way. And I was like, okay, well, I trust your opinion. And then I was really happy with who we ended up choosing. Plus, his name was cute. It's like Woody Woodpecker Construction. I was like, that's a cute name. But he did an awesome job. And Matreya said, ooh, live stream. I love this financial discussion. Well, good. Uh, please tune in. Radical Geek said, yeah, the eyebrows almost came off my head. I cooked 10 bucks will feed us all for a few meals. Exactly. Like, I would have too. It's, that's what I was talking about last night. It just blows my mind how much mediocre. Like, I mean, honestly, Chipotle... A lot of these restaurants, I consider mediocre food, right? It's really, you just want to be lazy and get some food and it, it'll fill you up, but it's not going to be like, oh, this is great food. Oh my gosh, it's the best ever. It's mediocre. And the prices though, that they're asking now, it's like going to a Michelin star restaurant. Like why is Chipotle charging $20 for a burrito bowl? Like, what? It's just crazy to me. I mean, I'm just thinking you go to any grocery store and get pounds of meat and do the same thing. Uh, uh, Sean said Angie's list, but they cost money. Yeah, I tried Angie's way back at the time. And then when they were like, oh, pay this fee, I was like, well, never mind. I think actually the one I used, I think it's called Home Advisors. So it's like a free one. And then, yeah, you put in your address what it is you're wanting done. And then they, um, all the different like companies that are in that area email you. And then you pick from there, you know, who you want to, you correspond and say, yeah, come out and um, give me a quote. And I only do it if they give a free quote. Like if a contractor is going to be like, well, I charge for a quote, I'll be like, never mind. <laughs> and I was hoping. That if I get somebody out here, uh, you know, people out here to give me quotes, that they'll write down on the quotes the actual square footage of my attic. <laughs> so that that way I could do my own, because I don't even know the square footage of my attic. Like, I have no idea. I know my house is a total of 2160. So I don't know what the attic space would be. And when I tried to Google it, I got all different answers. Some said it's double whatever your house size is. Some said it's like a third of what your house size is. So I'm like, okay, so how much? Because they're like, oh, you measure the length and the width. And I'm like, okay, how am I going to, how am I going to do that? So I was hoping if I get a few people to give me quotes, they'll give me that information. Uh uh, Sharon said, we could go to Texas Roadhouse and spend less than five guys. Yes. Isn't that the truth? Like, again, where are they coming up with these prices? Sean said, my daughter is not keto. We got her a bacon and egg McGriddle, and it was over $10 just for one breakfast meal. Oh, my God, $10 for bacon and egg McGriddle? I thought those used to be like $1.50. 10 bucks. That's just crazy. It's just, 
I mean, it's almost like these restaurants just want you to cook from home. I don't understand how everybody's paying them. Like, I, where was, oh, I was, you know, to get my Dutch. I drove past, there's a Starbucks, like, in the same parking lot as Dutch, which I think is hilarious. The Starbucks was there first, though. They had a line out of the parking lot for Starbucks. And I'm like, really? You're paying that price? Like, I go to Starbucks when I get my free birthday. Drink. Now, I do go to Dutch, but still, I just am like, they're really paying that kind of money for stuff. And you see it all the time. There's just these mediocre fast food places, and they have lines out the parking lot. And I'm like, how are people paying that much? Uh, Radical Geek said, also, to be fair, 20 bucks was extra meat, but regular meat was still 12 So $8 for extra meat? And here's my thing. Again, probably my construction PTSD. Are they really putting the extra meat? You know, like, how do you know you're getting extra meat? Or that it's the the amount of extra meat? Like, they might be like, oh, we put a scoop of meat. And for extra meat, it's, you know, two more scoops. But uh, we're just going to be really, like, you're not, like, sometimes I see some of them, they'll do like a heaping scoop, Right. And then when it's the extra meat, it's like not even a full scoop there. Oh, yeah, we'll just do that. And then it's like, I paid extra. And is it? Is it really the extra? I don't know. I'm, I'm so skeptical. <laughs> Especially when you have to pay extra. I'm like, I want to see the before and after. <laughs> and then you don't know if you're ordering it because it's going to be delivered or you go and pick it up. So you have no idea if you actually got extra meat or if it was equivalent to that. But still, twelve to twenty dollars. Like I'm just thinking, how much meat you could just get by itself for that same price. Uh, Shauna said, "There's another app called Thumbtack. It is free. I believe you can pay your services and pro." Oh, thank you, Thumbtack. I like that. That's a good name. Let me see, Thumbtack. Oh, look, it just came up for me. Oh, caring for your home made easy. Hire a pro. Oh, I like this. House cleaning, handyman, appliance repair and maintenance, interior painting, electrical and wiring repair, TV. Wow. Wow. Roof repair, plumbing drain, bartending. Wow. Ooh. Oh, all kinds of services. Limousine, dog grooming, training. Wow. Okay. I'm going to... Uh, save that. That's awesome. Thanks, Shauna. Yeah, just doing that and get those quotes out there and we'll just see. So I'll try to tackle. I probably won't get in the attic today. I I, I need something stronger than my coffee. <laughs> and I have to figure out how to how to get it off off of the ladder, y'all. I need I need Renee here to show me how she did it. <laughs> so I'm like, how do I do that? Right? So, uh, right, Shana's like, I usually end up calling brother, right? And we do, like, we could probably call Heath's youngest brother um, to get up there and maybe he can look around for me. I don't know. I just, uh, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I'll definitely figure something out. And just to kind of know, I, I, again, I'm going to compare what it is for me to do it versus hiring it done and see what the difference is because if it's if it's too much like if it's double the cost then i'll probably do it myself sean said we have a mobile tire person who will come to you and put tires on your car he's also cheaper than the regular tire shops wow that's awesome i was listening to one channel and they were talking about you know side hustles right there's another way if you are like, well, it's hard for me to save money, get a side hustle, and then you could put the side hustle money in there. And they said there's lots of lucrative side hustles where it's like that. You're a mobile tire person. Or there's people who actually you can hire to come organize your garage or clean out your uh, closet uh, or clean, you know, like if you need your kitchen organized or whatever, you could pay people to come do that for you. There's even, get this, y'all, there's a diaper service where, and this is usually in affluent neighborhoods, but you can pay someone to come collect all of the dirty diapers 
and and then um you know they take it away for you and then they even have some if you're like one of those that do the reusable diapers they come and pick up all the dirty ones they go and clean it them clean it for you and then bring it back the next week so then when they're cl collecting the next load of dirty diapers they're giving you the clean ones i'm like ooh that's a, and apparently you can make good money doing that if you can stomach that. to me that's just like oh i don't want to do deal with diapers <laughs> but there's all kinds of little side hustles like that that you can you know if if you're apt to go and doing that um they said the thing is and this might be true with your tire person is a lot of these like little side hustles you're kind of on call so it might be nine o'clock at night and so it's calling you and says hey can you come and do this and you might have to then jump in your vehicle to go help that person so you kind of have to be a little more flexible uh shauna said something to say for not having an overhead right Radical Geek said, hey, I made a mess in the kitchen. Right now, I kind of wish I could pay someone to come clean up after me. There's probably someone you could. <laughs> uh, Tweet TQ Cat said, I know we're talking about saving money here, but if someone can come to my house, tires, and, and I don't have to wait in dirty shop somewhere, I'll pay whatever it costs, right? That is an advantage because you can then not because they always stink to me like it just it smells like old tires in those shops but i've also i know here and i imagine it's most places like if you need your windshield replaced they'll meet you at your house and do it in your driveway which i thought that was cool uh shauna said i just cleaned out my fridge i think i was making something fermented oh well there you go as long as there's no mold on it try it <laughs> Hey, L. Strange said, hey, I almost missed. Hey, welcome. We're actually just about to wrap it up. Sean said, that's what the children are for, cleaning up the messes, right? Well, my children that would clean up the messes would just eat all of it. <laughs> uh, uh Sharon said, Shauna, you told me you have no attention of fermenting. I mean, she didn't have attention. Some, some things just happened, right? <laughs> El Strange said, I was working and then felt the need to clean under the fridge. Laugh out loud. <laughs> right. Don't you hate that? That's I do have a little bit of an ADHD when it comes to cleaning because I will be like, you know what? I need to do the dishes. And then when I start on the dishes... Then I'm like, you know what? But I need to start on the bat. And this is truly what happened earlier. I was like, but I need to get the bath mats from both of our bathrooms and they need to be washed. And I was like, okay. So then I, I was like, I'll let the water heat up to wash the dishes and I'll go get those. And then when I go to get out of our master bath, I'm like, you know what? This floor really needs sweeping, right? Even though it's Heath's bathroom to clean. Um, and so I was scooping that up and I was like, well, I need to take all the stuff out of the bathroom so that I can really sweep it well and clean the floors well. So then I'm doing that. The water's running. I've got all the, the bath mats and then took everything out of that bathroom. And then I'm like, okay. And then I get the bath mats. I come in here and put it in the wash. And then I finally do the dishes. And then I'm just thinking, oh, but then I need to get the live scheduled and I need to start like fermenting all of the bell peppers i got five for a dollar i was like oh yeah and i have like all these plans right and here i am almost an hour and a half later <laughs> to atq cat said unintentional fermentation right shana said oh you mean that wasn't scoby um no no probably was not uh, Radical Geek said, ha, huh, I don't mind vehicle stops. You all will have to remind me to tell my shop story. Oh, okay. So on Coffee Talk tomorrow, we need to hear the shop story. L. Strange said, today is the last day of the pay period. It squeezed in a few hours after the gym. Wow. I hope that was overtime money. How nice. Batty said, yes, I have major ADHD when cleaning squirrel. Right. Because you're like, like the other day I was sweeping the house because these dogs, they, they keep trying to make a third dog. 
and I'm sweeping and then I'm like, oh, that looks dusty. I need to dust. And then it's like, okay, should I start dusting because I'm sweeping? So I should dust first. And I mean, y'all, I need to do like here I am talking about having to track your progress and having list and everything for finances. I need to have a list for cleaning. Like I need to be like, okay, on Tuesdays, you dust on, you know, uh, dust and polish on Tuesdays and then Wednesdays sweep or Wednesdays and Saturdays and Sundays and Mondays. I feel like I sweep this house constantly. And then one day for cleaning the kitchen and then cleaning the bath, like I just, it's just, sometimes it's a bit much, right? I need to have better list at it. Uh, oh, Strange said, big overtime. Ooh, very productive today. Guess I'll nap now. I'll go back and listen to the tips. Oh, awesome. Yeah. That, anytime you get some overtime, that is nice. Because actually, y'all, since Heath is still at work, right? Early when he logged in because he worked on New Year's Day, which was double pay, right? So it, even though he worked eight hours, it showed as 16. Well, they've been offering VTO all week. And so he, when he logged in this morning, he saw he already had over 40 hours, like 40.2 hours. And he was like, oh, they're off for VTO. Why don't I take it? And then I could just hang out with you today. I'm like, we're going to hang out tomorrow, all right, and Tuesday. Like, it's okay. And I was like, but you worked all those out, like you got double pay on Monday. Why are you going to give that up just so that you can hang with me today? I was like, no, work it. Remember, you're supposed to end up with 48 hours this week. And he was like, oh, all right. He's so disappointed. And I'm like, and besides, you know what happens when we take it off? We just end up sitting on the couch watching TV all day. It's not like, like to me, when I take a day off, I want to be very productive. Like I'm, I'm like, okay, I have, you know, this day off, I plan to, you know, clean this and clean that and get all this cleaned. And, oh, I got to, you know, cut all this up so I can firm it and get that going. Like I have all these tasks and I'm like, look, if you take the day off, you're not going to enjoy it because I'm not going to sit on the couch because I got a lot of plans today. Um, and his plans are always like, on my day off, I just want to sit and watch TV. And I'm like, no, days off, that's when you get everything done. <laughs> Marion said, I've been working 10 hours per week of overtime. Wow, that is nice. Mm. My coffee's cold. Lisa, thank you again. My coffee's cold. I'm going to have to go heat it up. But, um, yeah, 10 hours of overtime. That is amazing. That is such a big chunk of money. Uh, 22 Key Cat, it's fun to have more time together, but more fun when you get that paycheck with the extra money. Yes. And my thing is, like, you already had to work on New Year's Day. Make it worth your while, right? Like, why, why just cash it in and be like, oh, I got my 40 hours? Like, no. You had to work on New Year's when I was off, so make it fun. Um, but I think that's also because I enjoy working, and, you know, so it, it doesn't bother me to have to work, right? Uh, in fact, if they were like, oh, Shelly, log in and you get some overtime, I would be there. Um, kind of right now, they're not giving any overtime because we're doing pretty good and our numbers are basically low. A lot of people don't do a lot of banking this time of year so we don't have a lot of of um work to do to say okay have overtime marian said only when there are no holidays right 20 tq cat said i used to work every minute of overtime i was offered touching yes i absolutely love it i remember at the company before this one the um July 4th was like a Sunday, which we were always closed on the weekend, but because they knew there would be a lot of people calling in to make claims because of July 4th, they offered overtime for anybody who wanted to work that Saturday to, you know, start taking calls to help cover that. So, of course, I volunteered. I was like, I think it was six hours. I was like, yeah, I'm going to work it. I mean, what else am I doing? And to get overtime, I... I 
it doesn't bother me. The job I do now, though, it is more difficult to get over time. Uh, I did get a little bit, like a, a quarter of, or no, three quarters of an hour this week, only because I'm the ending shift and we can't leave until everything is cleared out of our review. So we have to stay until that's cleared. So I did get a little bit. Um, but otherwise, in what I do now, in order for me to get overtime, it has to be somebody else there working. Like, because if I work something, everything's always double checked. So if I work something, I have to have someone there to review my work. So that means there would have to be at least two people in order to work any overtime. So there's just not in the books right now to offer that because we're, we're really not that busy. Uh, Marianne said, I actually have to work 40 hours before I can get overtime. So no holidays or other PTO. Right. I had a company that that's what they changed to, which I they were like, it has to be worked 40 hours. So not time of 40, but actually worked 40 hours to then get the overtime of anything over that. So, oh, but the company I work with right now, it's actually not worked. It's just if you're over 40, anything in your time sheet that is over 40 is over time. I'm like, oh, I'm loving this as long as I can. Because like this week, even though it was 40 hours and 40.75, I'll still get that 0.75 of overtime, even though I was off on Monday. So, which is nice. But yeah, the other company I had, it was had to be physically worked. And I was like, oh, that sucks. Because then it's like, yeah, on a holiday, it's like, is it really a holiday if I'm not going to be able to get overtime? <laughs> Especially when they're offering overtime, right? Well, y'all, it has been so much fun. I have not eaten this, this what I've had today. So I'm going to get off so I can go make me a lunch. I think I'm going to make salad again. I got some more radicchio. I'm going to make me a salad. And then I've got to cut all these bell peppers so I can ferment some more. Because this is so, I love fermented bell peppers. They're so good. And fried for a dollar. So cheap. So cheap. But I hope y'all enjoyed this. Please let me know if you haven't already. Give it a thumbs up, please. That really helps. And we'll try to do this on a weekly basis. So next week, we'll probably do it on Sunday. So Heath can be here. And, and we can interact and just keep us inspired as we go through this um, financial challenge this month, right? Help each other become successful in our finances so that the future you thanks you for doing this. All right, y'all. Thanks so much. Bye. Love y'all. Thanks again for tuning in.